Hi, everybody. It's been a while since we visited. My name is Michael Horn. I'm the American media representative for the Billy Meyer UFO contacts. And today I want to I want to discuss uh, a slightly different perspective on all of this UFO and ET and extra, you know, the extraterrestrial element and all. You know, when we think about our world, if we think about our world, it, it's this object that is spinning around uh, on its own axis and it's, you know, revolving around the sun. It's, it's one of a number of planets in this solar system, in this great vastness of space. As a matter of fact, space is so vast, on the, on the overall scale of things, we live on what's the equivalent of a speck of cosmic lint. Really, if you think about it. And, and if you can look out at the sky, especially the night sky, to get a sense of that perspective, uh, you know, look at Hubble telescope photographs if you really want a perspective, but from wherever we can, if we can look out at night and find a starry sky at night somewhere, some places don't permit that. But if we do, and we look out into the depth of the night sky, the vastness of space, we see stars, we get a sense of this smallness of place, not of insignificance in the grand scheme of things, but smallness of place and insignificance in the sense of exalting ourselves above and beyond all other things in creation, a self-importance. That self-importance on this small cosmic speck of lint has gotten humanity for millennia to be fighting, to be clawing and, and, and grasping and struggling and climbing over each other. For what? For some sort of dominion and control in this world, or so we think. It's never paid off. It, it always brings more conflict and more war. Here we are doing this, revolving around the sun, spinning around, rotating around our axis, axis <laughs> with no axis. And we think about it, if we do, and we get a perspective, we go, well, why are we doing this? Is this what life is really about? Is this what all life forms, if there are indeed other life forms on other worlds in our universe, is this how they exist? Now we, those of us that have been interested in this greater perspective, the, the cosmic questions, we contemplate extraterrestrial life, and we think, well, if there are other life forms, and any number of them, some of which would have already evolved to be space travelers, would they be coming, searching for life elsewhere in the universe? Let's presume that they would, if they're anything like us. We're thinking about it all the time. We want to think about moving on to other planets and then ultimately going into space. Our solar system isn't much of space. It's near space. We're talking about going into outer space. Other races, they've developed and they travel and they look. Somebody somewhere finds us, let's assume. Now, they're curious. They're explorers as we are curious and will become cosmic explorers someday if we survive ourselves. So, they come upon this planet, they have technology, they look down, they can come closer. Um, let's start looking at this premise. The premise that we've been sold for the most part about all this is aliens, evil aliens, aliens coming to abduct us, to take our precious corrupted genetics, seemingly interested in our emotions, which as history demonstrates, are simply filled, overflowing, beyond filled, with aggression and greed and fear and anger and lust and all these great things that we think make us human beings instead of higher values, which we have, but they aren't yet the hallmark, the imprint that resonates from and around this world of ours. But we're being sold this idea of evil aliens coming here threatening us, 
alien attacks, the world being invaded, movies churned out, television on aliens that are a threat to this precious life that we've created here. Why do you think we have that image of it all? It's because just like with Religion, we've created aliens in our image, except we, we've, made, we've made this personification, this expression, this representation of them, these evil, scary creatures. Well, heck, in religion, for the most part, Judeo-Christianity, we've got a wrathful, vengeful, envious, jealous God that we've manifested to scare the tar out of us and to threaten us with eternal damnation being dipped in hot lead for eternity if we don't believe and behave in certain ways. Now, that might offend some people that have those religious beliefs, but we're leaving behind, hopefully, the age of beliefs for the age of truth and knowledge. How does this whole evil alien thing fit into truth and knowledge? On this planet, for the past 10,000 years, we've had a cumulative period of only 250 years of peace. Aliens haven't been attacking us. We haven't been bombarded from space by all sorts of aggressors and, and what have you. Although our history has some pretty rich details about some unpleasant extraterrestrial human beings, that we're here if you study the Meyer material. So as we move into this whole thing where we've been sold such a bill of goods, well, why have we been sold the evil alien premise if it isn't true? It's to control you like everything else in life for a buck, for control. You know, for those of you that can remember a time when this wasn't the dominant representation of human life on Earth? Do any of you remember before people were standing around, sitting around together alone in families at the same tables doing this? Do you know, for those of you that are relatively new to planet Earth, 20, 25 years, whatever, somewhere in that realm, or even a little more, do you know that people didn't used to spend their entire lives and their consciousness and all their thoughts and concerns doing this? Yeah, that's right. We used to have relationships with people. We used to discuss things. Have we been fooled? Have we been, again, sold a bill of goods, sold technologies an answer, sold aliens as a threat? Well, if you've paid any attention at all to the only actual, singularly authentic, still ongoing UFO extraterrestrial contact case, the Billy Meyer contacts in Switzerland, for those of you in the UK, you know where Switzerland is. It's a plane ride or two, no time at all. Extraterrestrial human beings have been and continue to meet with Billy Meyer for over 74 years. A lot of you don't know about it, or you've dismissed it. It's not exciting enough that there's 1,200 clear daytime photographs, eight films, videos, sound recordings, metal samples, and over 26,000 pages of information from real extraterrestrials. No, a lot of people want to be scared by evil aliens, go back to their texting and tweeting and twerking and the rest of it. Why, if there really are extraterrestrials, would they contact anybody here? By definition, their evolution would have required them to have very long lifespans. To embark on deep space travel, it would have been a long period of time that they were doing their first explorations. Hundreds of years would be required for the lifespans. Probably they would have even longer lifespans now, approaching a thousand years, an advanced race, stuff like that. They would have come to be peaceful enough with themselves and their own worlds that they could cooperate that they could go forth in a unified way from their world to discover. And they would have found us, a race that is, <laughs> you know, uh, at each other, like, like mad dogs, nipping, bar and worse, destroying ourselves and each other. Planet suicide, here we are. Now, do you think that their priority would be to float you through the wall so they could take you? Of course not. What would the real reason be for context, especially 
for real contacts. I don't mean all this gobbledygook in the UFO community, which doesn't have a shred of real truth to it, except that they can say, well, there have been things in the sky and some people have photographed or filmed them. Some people, a small handful of people, may have actually seen some of these people when they were on the ground center. Contact with them? Mm, I don't think so. Being abducted by them? No, that's your military, our military doing that. And we know that from people in the military, not just from Meyer, who's been telling us this for a very long time. The purpose of the Meyer context, I like to say, the bottom line is it's the key to our future survival. Not just the technology that we've you know, embarked upon and developed, and oftentimes with some impulse help from these play art and extraterrestrials to get us to a place where we could possibly use technology for our benefit, not to destroy ourselves. The core of this is the spiritual teaching. It's about consciousness. In our film, The Silent Revolution Truth, <clears throat> Virtually the first, first thing that Billy Meyer says is the meaning of life is the evolution of consciousness. Now it's great that now more and more people are coming forward to say, well, we're here to get together and to come together and live in peace. And You know, great. Nothing wrong with that. We've at least started to shove aside a lot of this imaginary channeling from other entities, which isn't coming from anybody out there. It's always the person himself. And now if people are coming forward to talk about their higher selves and intuition, good. How about we start to take the next step, the reason for the Meyer context, the reason for extraterrestrial context with us on planet Earth. This key to our future survival is in consciousness. It's in the spiritual teaching, non-religious, belief-free, how to think, the how-to of consciousness. We can't get there just by saying, well, if it feels good or we think this way. We've got to now understand we've been given the gift of the mechanism. If you want to know how a computer works and you're the kind of person or a car or anything else, you pick up a manual, you, you study the teaching for it. And you test it, you apply it. You see if when you do this, that happens. When you do this with the car, that works. The spiritual teaching is beyond ancient. It is the original spiritual teaching of this creation. No deities, gods, angels, saints, saviors, none of these imaginary constructs are responsible for it. Indeed, and in fact, we are solely responsible for ourselves. And that is the good news. We are not going to be punished by some guy in the sky, sky daddy, who doesn't like it if we don't believe in him. We can only either bless or punish ourselves through our thoughts, the feelings that those thoughts lead to, and our actions that arrive and arise from our thoughts, our feelings, our micro thoughts. <laughs> That's the next step is the action. We do this 24-7. We're always thinking, we're always feeling, we're always creating another feeling after the thought, and then we act or we don't act based on that process. This is explained in the most beautiful detail, the clearest, most comprehensible teaching in the Meyer case. Yes, Meyer has books in Ger over 50 books in German. We've got four or five books translated into English as well. And at my website, theyfly.com, you can read a lot of the stuff for free. For free. You can start to understand how it actually works, where we get beyond the platitudes and the good intentions of people who are thankfully saying, well, we've got to, you know, it's consciousness. And we've got to do it ourselves. Yes. Uh, choir. I, let, let's applaud. Now let's really learn how that works and how you and I take that, study it, and how it enriches us, opens our intuitions even more deeply, shows us the difference between what the value of the so-called gut feeling is and how the mind works in concert with us. When heart and mind with truth align, we'll see the living proof of the silent revolution of truth. That's the words in the song we have. And it is the how. It is the how to do it. And it draws us 
in more and more together with ourselves and with like-minded people, not in a cultic way where you could know, only if you study the Meyer material. No, it means we then begin to resonate with free thinking, well-intentioned consciousness uh, related uh, students, if you will. And how we then start to also shake out that which doesn't work in philosophy, in religion, in various teachings, how to discern and make ourselves more aware and align with truth. There is a truth, a singular truth. There are some things where we have our own truth, but there's also truth above that, and it's not to be believed. We find that out for ourselves. We do it through responsible, self-responsible study. And I invite you to look into the Meyer case and the spiritual teaching and the wealth of information and joy and freedom that it brings to take that upon you and to, you know, kind of polish it for yourself. Find out what works, if it works, what doesn't work. Now you're truly self-responsible. And we hear other people speak these good things. Wonderful. Let us resonate to that and leave behind all this nonsense with aliens and saviors and saints and, and the rest of it. This is a new time, a new age. It's going to come in with a lot of conflict. It's going to come in with light and dark of vying for dominance. The light will prevail, but it's going to be a rough ride in many ways until we get there. So let's do it as much together in consciousness, not in belief, but in consciousness and in truth as we can. I'm Michael Horn, and I invite you to visit theyfly.com, to participate on the They Fly blog, and to express your voice about all of this to me and to those of us around the world studying and pursuing the spiritual teaching. Thank you.